Welcome to the What Matters Today podcast from the Geneva Graduate Institute. I'm Dan Graham, Head of Communications at the Institute. In this podcast series, we ask members of our faculty to comment on key global issues. Next week is Science Diplomacy Week here in Geneva, and therefore this week's episode of What Matters Today will focus on the topic of science diplomacy. We will highlight what science diplomacy is and discuss the problems it's trying to solve. We will also talk about how the war in Ukraine is impacting science diplomacy. Our guest today is Nicolo Iolno. Nicolo is a biotechnologist with an MBA from the Collège des Ingénieurs, a grande école based in Paris. He currently works at the Swiss Federal Department of Foreign Affairs, where he deals with various aspects related to science in and for diplomacy. And since 2021, Nicolo serves as chair of the Foreign Ministry's Science and Technology Advisors Network. In this episode, Nicolo is interviewed by Dr. Jérôme Zubiri, who is the managing director of the Tech Hub here at the Geneva Graduate Institute and is also an academic advisor for the Institute's executive education program. Just a quick word about the Tech Hub. It's a transdisciplinary initiative that supports all departments and research centers here at the Institute. The Tech Hub's initiatives revolve around two main objectives. One, supporting research, teaching, and dialogue on and with digital technologies at the Institute. And two, expressing our own voice on technologies. To find out more about the Tech Hub, visit our website at graduateinstitute.ch slash tech hub. And to find out more about Science Diplomacy Week, be sure to visit our events section on our website, which is graduateinstitute.ch slash events. Hi, Nicolo. Thanks a lot for being here. My first question to you is maybe tell us about yourself. Thank you so much, Jerome. Thanks uh, for having me here at The Graduate. Um, Maybe I have to start by saying that my academic background is actually in uh, biotechnology. So uh, I'm actually a natural scientist. uh, And uh, I started my professional career in uh, technology transfer, which is uh, the branch within a university that uh, supports researchers to commercialize uh, their technology, actually by either licensing out to to the industry or by spinning out uh, a startup company. And it's through technology transfer that I came in touch with science diplomacy. And I think we are here for that. And um, actually, like uh, Swiss Next in Boston was looking for a head of uh, startup and innovation services. And uh, that was my uh, my first actually uh, professional experience into, uh, into the field. Maybe two words about Swissnex. Swissnex, it's, a, it's an initiative of the State Secretariat for uh, Education, Research and Innovation. It has like five outposts. It's basically science consulates in strategically located innovation hubs. I was in Boston, was one in San Francisco, one in Shanghai, one in Rio. And yeah, I think I'm, uh, I'm done with the five. And uh, so it was an amazing experience uh, and uh, there actually I had the chance to meet people such as George Church at the base of the Human Gen- Genome Project, Noam Chomsky or Bob Langer. Maybe, maybe people here at the graduate don't know him, but he is actually the one who started the company Moderna, who developed the, the vaccine that <laughs> unfortunately we all uh, know about. So in Boston at Swissnex, it was what can diplomacy do for science? And that was the question that we were trying uh, to answer. And then I was called actually by uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs to come back in Switzerland and address another perspective of science diplomacy. It's what science can do for diplomacy. And that's what I have been working on uh, basically in the, in the past uh, four or five years. And uh, yeah, like uh, Geneva, it's an important tool for Swiss diplomacy. We have been trying you know, to funnel science scientific knowledge and data into whatever is happening here on the multilateral uh, stage. And then also we realized that uh, science can be a neutral broker for, uh, you know, our diplomatic pursuits uh, abroad in politically fragile uh, context. So that's another avenue. And then uh, we have been working with peers to exchange best practices. And that's uh, where, you know, my activity with the Foreign Ministry of Science, Technology and Advice Networks uh, comes into play. Thank you, Nicolo. So maybe 
in one or two sentences, can you give us your definition of science diplomacy? Because you already gave us some uh, sound illustrations of this, but... So there is an, update, uh, uh, an outdated, actually, uh, definition of, uh, of science diplomacy, uh, but which helps to understand a little bit the mapping of uh, the different dimension. It's, uh, it's the one given by the Royal Society. And you have uh, science uh, for diplomacy, you have diplomacy for science, and science in diplomacy. So these are the three dimensions. And within the science in diplomacy here in Switzerland, what we're trying to develop is also uh, a sub-branch, which is anticipatory science diplomacy. And uh, yeah, science for diplomacy is actually how can you use like a scientific collaboration to foster your diplomatic uh, interests. Diplomacy for science, how can you use the diplomatic network to the service of the academic community at large. And then science in diplomacy is uh, how you really develop uh, a knowledge based uh, approach uh, to diplomatic uh, processes. Thank you, Nicolo. My first, my third question would be, uh, what is science diplomacy trying to fix? It's, it's a very interesting question. And uh, I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's difficult to answer, but uh, I think there is a, there is a bit of cross-pollination between uh, two words, not speaking the same languages, uh, having a different work culture, having different stakeholders, uh, different KPIs. Uh, so it's really bridging uh, these two words, the word of science and the word of diplomacy. And I think I like, uh, I like to, uh, to understand it as another way of technology transfer somehow. somehow. And uh, that's actually like what is also happening like within universities, you see that, uh, that you know, there are brokers of uh, scientific knowledge for the policy making. And for some weird constellation, they're embedded within the technology transfer offices. So that's a little bit, uh, you know, my, uh, my take home message. So it's bringing two, uh, two, uh, two words that are not speaking the same language. Thank you, Nicolo. So science diplomacy, and in particular, anticipatory science diplomacy is quite important for Switzerland. Can you tell us a bit more about this? Yes. Yeah, so if we go back to the, the taxonomy that we defined before, I think uh, we have been striving for science diplomacy, this, uh, especially when our federal counselor Ignazio Cassius came into office uh, with his uh, scientific background. He really wanted to strive and uh, explore new avenue uh, on uh, how to bring more science into, uh, into the diplomatic uh, services. And uh, again, going back to, to that definition, uh, Diplomacy for science was already uh, well established uh, and developed. The Swiss Next Network, it's actually an example there. You take a conventional consulate in a, in a city like Boston uh, that normally uh, puts stamps on passports uh, and does visas, and you transform it into a science diplomacy consulate, whatever it means. It's, a, it's like a platform of exchange for peers from across the pond. So that's the diplomacy for science approach that, uh, you know, has been developed over the past uh, 20 years now. And we are a role model for many other countries who, who really try to emulate uh, the, the Swiss Next model. Then for science for diplomacy, uh, maybe I can bring a, an example from uh, the practice. You have here in Geneva CERN, which is the epitome of science diplomacy. It started in a different era, uh, but CERN is based on a model of science for peace, actually. And CERN has given some offspring to that model and, you know, in politically fragile uh, regional contexts, such as the Middle East. For example, like uh, Professor Herwig Schopper was a former, uh, former director general of CERN, uh, really gave a contribution to the establishment of this infrastructure in Jordan and Sisami, yeah, which uh, brings together um, countries such as Iran, Israel, Palestine, uh, and it's amazing. Now uh, he's uh, I think 99, he's turning 100 years next year. 
and uh, he approached us uh, because he saw that uh, you know we were uh, we were working on uh, on uh, science uh, for diplomacy approaches and he uh, he was actually working on a mini CERN but for the Balkans and uh, he was able with uh, you can know, representatives of the region at CERN to bring together 10 countries and the political context in the region it's useless to say it's a bit difficult they come out from a period uh, that uh, has been characterized by a lot of tensions serbia kosovo and you have uh, another element some countries are part of the european union some other uh, are not among those 10 countries and actually switzerland what uh, is trying to do it's actually bring some kind of good offices you know like uh, we we broker some political milestones within the project. So we have, we help the scientists to, for example, determine a process on how to select the site because it will be a physical infrastructure and uh, it can be only in one country. And then you need to develop also the governance, uh, you know, it's a common endeavor and uh, the medical doctors and the patients uh, have to be able to, to join. And what I forget actually to say, it's a minister, but it's for medical purposes. It's actually, you can, you can accelerate particles to uh, treat cancer. So that was science for diplomacy and the science in diplomacy, which is very relevant for Geneva. And here there are some flagship initiatives uh, such as, you know, the establishment of the Geneva Science and Diplomacy Anticipator or uh, the Geneva Science Policy Interface at uh, the University of Geneva. And here, you know, especially JESDA, the Geneva Science and Diplomacy Anticipator, is trying really to bring into the multilateral uh, discourse, uh, you know, what could come next in terms of technological development and how the diplomatic community should be well prepared to address, uh, you know, scientific breakthrough, breakthroughs. Uh, and yeah, it's, uh, you know, the rays of quantum computing, uh, what does it mean? And uh, there are probably conventions that need to be updated and all, uh, all these things. And I think Switzerland, like just there is one instrument, but then we have also like a special envoy of the Federal Council for Science Diplomacy, Ambassador Fazel who is also really trying to bring under his leadership, you know, all the academic community to uh, contribute to science diplomacy. So I think in a nutshell, I gave, uh, you know, a panoramic of what's going on. Thank you, Nicolo. My last question is a little bit more controversial. It's a question about um, the war in Ukraine. How do you see uh, science diplomacy evolving in this new context or do we know how science diplomacy will evolve in this context i think uh, you know until now or before before the conflict uh, started we were kind of uh, living in an era of positive twist of uh, science uh, into diplomacy and a positive twist to globalization actually and the, you know the development um, of the mdgs or the sdgs uh, it was a result of uh, that attitude uh, towards globalization and now we're experiencing a fragmented globalization and i believe that science unfortunately it's going a step back and we might, you know, in the future see double standards, the development of parallel technologies and then, uh, you know, provide probably a problem to access and uh, to access to technologies. And I think the, the progress overall, uh, it's going to be devoted to a part of humanity and not for, uh, for humanity uh, uh, as a whole. So I think there is a uh, there is that uh, as overall uh, as overall concept for um, you know the, the breaking of the the conflict in Ukraine. Um, we saw that there there has been an incredible uh, solidarity among the academic community, and that's another aspect if you want of science, science diplomacy. Like uh, many many universities uh, open door to scholars at risk uh, from both sides, uh, and uh, I think even here in Switzerland we have uh, we have some. Uh, some excellent examples and, uh, and the Graduate Institute uh, counts among those institutes that have uh, given the example. Then uh, I think science diplomacy is an hope also in this kind of context. And uh, I've seen some backlashes of, uh, you know, breaking ties uh, with uh, institutional science. 
But uh, I personally believe that, uh, you know, at the individual level uh, of researchers, the collaboration should go on because those individuals who were striving uh, for collaborations and for the progress of society and humanity as a whole, like they will be at some point maybe the solution to, uh, to conflicts. And that's, that's also what science diplomacy uh, is all about. And uh, yeah, so I think, you know, like uh, it's, uh, it's an evolving situation. Fortunately, like the perspective are not great. I think like uh, we're living in this fragmented world in which like uh, geopolitical powers are also, you know, controlling key technologies and, uh, and so don't see more openness, rather closeness. So don't want to end with a, <laughs> with a negative perspective, but maybe the positive perspective for the scholars at the, the Graduate Institute, it's really, you know, try to keep uh, the set of value you work for and its openness and, uh, you know, try to keep uh, the international research community alive for the progress of humanity, whatever it is. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nicolo. It's true that in, in this context of globalization and the fragmentation of the world, science diplomacy can definitely offer some alternatives uh, to bridge the gap between these different parts of the world. And uh, that's certainly something that we're going to look for and, and support here in Geneva. Thank you very much, Nicolo. Thank you so much, Jerome. That was Nicolo Iolno and Jerome Zubiri discussing science diplomacy. This podcast series is produced by the Geneva Graduate Institute Communications team. For more information about the Institute, please visit our website at graduateinstitute.ch. I'm Dan Graham. Thanks for listening. <laughs>